Namaste to all. I recently read an article on importance of swaha written by my Acharya Swami Ram Swarup Yoga Acharya. I am going to read it out here. To know any Vedic word, one will have to take into consideration the fact that as God is formless, so is the knowledge of all four Vedas and so is the word swaha. Therefore, the printed Vedas are not Vedas. It is called a Samhita and Samhita can be destroyed whereas Vedvani is eternal. The pious, eternal and immortal word Swaha is recited or pronounced invariably in every Yajna or Havan at the end of each mantra. It has got a prayer to Almighty God with some deep meanings. Swaha itself is directly a Ved mantra. In Ajurveda mantra 31 by 7, it is clearly mentioned that Vedvani emanates directly from Almighty God. Yajna Valkya Rishi in his Smriti tells to his wife Maitreyi that in the beginning of every creation, this formless Vani emanates from formless Almighty God in the heart of four Rishis selected by God from the previous creation in which they were topmost in tapasya that is austerity and good conduct etc. That is why automatically they are called Rishis with their names Agni, Vayu, Aditya and Angira. As the breath comes out from man, similarly Ved Mantras emanates from Almighty God. As outer breath is inhaled in the body, so the Vedas are inhaled in God at the time of final destruction. Please remember, God is formless and has no mouth etc. This is an example and comparison only to enable us to understand the origination of eternal knowledge of Vedas. Otherwise, neither it is inhaled nor exhaled from God. Further, in the heart of each of the four rishis mentioned above, that is Agni, Vayu, Aditya and Angira, one Ved is originated without writing and without preach. How? God is formless and almighty. That is, he has all the powers and does not require any assistance. So, God does not require any assistance from any Yamaraj or any Yamadut to get the soul out from any person. He does not require any assistance from any Indra to shower the water in the shape of rain. He does not require any priest or preacher or guru etc. to preach to anybody. Because He is Almighty. He is always independent and His powers alone create and do all the deeds automatically. It is we people only who are dependent on eyes to see, ears to listen and require pencil, paper or pen etc. to write and so on but not Almighty God. So automatically at right time the creation takes place. Mantras emanate from God and are originated in the heart of four rishis without paper pencil because it is all within the power of God. God being Almighty can do anything but cannot do injustice or unnatural task. For example, a sinner prays to God to forgive his sins. God will never forgive. A horse cannot give birth to a human. Avatar cannot take place. Now let us see the word Swaha. The meaning of Swaha has been explained in various mantras. Ajurveda mantra 11 by 57 states Makasya Shiro Asi. That alive family household who performs daily yajna is considered as the head of yajna. Just as the head holds supreme position in the body because body functions are controlled and actions are delivered from the mind which is in the head. Similarly, such a family is supreme in the world who performs a holy yajna daily since it gives numerous benefits to the whole of the mankind. Then what to talk about people who do not perform holy yajna because they are neither benefactors to themselves nor to anyone else. Swaha word has been defined in Nirukta Brahmin Granth chapter 8, Kand 20. That is people, householders who perform daily havan, gain numerous qualities and even spread to others. So non-performance of holy yajna has now spread the illusion all over the world. According to Nirukta Grantha, Swaha meaning number 1. All people should speak sweet, polite, auspicious language which is conducive to the well-being and prosperity of others. Since the pious word Swaha carries all such attributes, hence it is pronounced in each Yajna. It may also be stated here that in ancient times when people performed daily Havan, they were blessed with this virtue, which is not commonly observed in people today due to lack of performance of Havan. Meaning number two, everyone should be clear hearted and should give up hypocrisy. It is for this reason that people chant Swaha in Havan. Again, it shall not be out of place to mention that at present people are very cunning and speak contrary to what is in store in their hearts and all this is happening due to lack of performance of daily havan by them. Meaning number three, no one should eye another person's article or property. 
and should strictly be satisfied with one's own share gained through the hard work to attain this contentment people chant swaha in havan so non performance of havan has created laziness and poverty meaning number 4 our offerings of fragrant materials and substances in fire benefits the entire world and hence this benevolent act must be accompanied by chanting of swaha says nirukta brahmin grantha meaning number 5 swaha is not only pronounced while making offerings in the fire but also while drinking pious water of the achamana this action remains us again and again that may god protect us from illusion etc we may gain money from hard work following the path of truth etc etc besides we pray by touching water with nose etc to pray god to keep our body healthy besides all this swaha has many other meanings and some of these which may be deliberated upon or number 1 su plus aha swaha that is beautiful eloquent vani or voice ajurveda mantra 38 by 11 explains it to be an action impregnated with the truth that is when one offers ghee and other materials that is combination of antibiotics in the samagri plus fragrant sweet plus nutritive materials through one's own hands into the pious fire of havan then this action is true pious deed since vedas support such an action vedas are eternal indestructible hence the pious deed of swaha owing to its origin from vedas is also eternal and indestructible this deed gives eternal peace to the doer undisputedly it is the desire of each and every human being to achieve the peace in life in nutshell this deed is virtuous auspicious act reward of which is eternal happiness bestowed on the doer i have never read uh, the meaning of swaha so elaborately explained by anyone in any of the texts i hope you would have understood a bit i think it is really necessary for all of us to listen this again and again in fact if i would also suggest you to buy the book vedas destroy illusion from vedmandir.com there are so many topics which my acharya has written to help and clarify to the readers on what is basics of vedas and what is the importance of almighty god and vedas in our life thank you so much namaste om